What's going on everyone, it's the Fake Weeb here, and before I get on my review for chapter 152, just a quick reminder, I'm sure the majority of you guys already know, but Jujutsu Kaisen will be going on a hiatus, Ekutami Sensei will be taking a one month break from Jujutsu Kaisen, and I'll talk more about that near the end of the video, and what my channel could be like during that one month hiatus, but yeah, hopefully Gege can rest well, I don't know if it's because of the break we're getting 9 pages this week, I would assume not, because usually chapter releases are ahead of its time so maybe this chapter was meant to be nine pages in order to finish this little zenin clan arc i don't know i'm not entirely sure but yeah chapter 152 of jjk only has nine pages but i do have some thoughts to say for what happened in these nine pages and as always before i get on with the review i would kindly appreciate it if you can drop a like on this video as that would help me out a ton because seriously guys you know you dropping a like help gets the video out there in the youtube algorithm and so that helps me and consider subscribing to the channel for more Jujutsu Kaisen manga and other manga content. I will be doing some more Chainsaw Man videos during this one month hiatus and, you know, just some other Jujutsu Kaisen videos in general. Don't worry, they're not going to be gone because we're going on a hiatus. I do have some videos planned for that and I will talk more about the hiatus and my channel after the review, so stick around the end if you care about that. But anyways, without wasting any more time, let's get on to the video. So the chapter starts off with Maki facing her mom, you know, like she said, she's gonna destroy everything in the Zenin clan and do what Mai entrusted to her, and yeah, it cuts back to Naoya crawling on the floor saying, ha, that Maki didn't even finish me off properly, hee <laughs> hee, but you know, then Maki's mom, who's all bloody, probably from Maki's doing, comes into the room and stabs Naoya from behind, completely finishing him off and killing him. Now, honestly, I did not expect for Naoya to die in this chapter, and if you want my opinion, I actually have two, or, well, I had two. Okay, well, basically, at first, I kind of wanted him to stay alive and maybe, you know, be with the crew for the culling game. I felt like that he could have had, you know, more plot relevance in the story because his character just seemed pretty interesting. Interesting in the fact that at a young age, he was told that he'll be the head of the clan and that he's a genius sorcerer. However, when he first sees Toji, he realizes Toji's strength is on another level than his own. And since he's supposed to be the head of the Zenin clan, he doesn't want to get left behind so he wants to be you know become part of the strongest but he's faced every day with the reality that his power is just average compared to toji and gojo but now maki this is why he resents maki so much because someone with almost the same power as toji and you know the potential to become like him she has now reached that level and to naoya's eyes or in his perspective he thinks to himself why does she a young and low-life woman get to be part of the strongest and not him and again to him it's absolutely pathetic but i guess to us readers we kind of love it and for him to die in this chapter it just felt like his character could have developed even more and his death felt pointless and overall his character was just kind of meaningless and not well written but then i started thinking again and maybe that's the whole point of naoya's character you know he's not supposed to have a good death he's supposed to die like shit you know he's a sexist person he just lost to the woman he humiliated and he's being killed by a woman the way he said woman had to die because if you remember he said that any woman who can't walk three steps behind a man should get stabbed in the back and die and well he just died by a woman the way he said woman had to die which i think is pretty ironic and um yeah he's a disgusting human being and maybe that's why his character is meant to be meaningless making his death pointless if that makes sense um and i don't, I don't think this is you know poor writing i don't think Ege is writing this poorly i think he or she just has a different way of doing things like it's not using that typical shonen trope it's just unpredictable and i, I find it more thrilling that way so uh yeah, well, let me know what you guys think about, you know, Naoya's character and his death in the comment section down below. That's personally my take on it, and uh, I'd love to hear your take, but, uh, yeah. Anyways, as the mom continues to bleed out, she sees herself playing with the younger versions of Maki and Mai, saying that she's glad to have given birth to them. 
Now, a lot of you might be confused, I was kind of confused as well, but I think after rereading this chapter, from my perspective, you know, at first in chapter 148, we're met that Maki and Mai's mom act the same way as the rest of the Zenin members, just being disrespectful and not even loving your own daughters. But in this chapter, the mom says that she always loved Maki and Mai and was glad that she gave birth to them. So does that mean the mom isn't like the other Zenin members? And I think when we first met Maki's mom, she said, for once, make me glad that I gave birth to you, Maki. I'm pretty sure she always loved her daughters, and she, the reason why she says that is to prevent Maki from entering the cursed tool storage room because she doesn't want her husband, Ogi, to kill their daughter. And I think the for once implies that Maki knows her mom was not proud of her for the majority of her life. It was, you know, also to prevent Maki from entering, but I kind of doubt that the mom was very supportive or there for her daughters growing up. She probably did love them, yes, but wasn't there for them. And it would make sense because, you know, it seemed like the clan itself was very male dominant or something. So it's hard to be there for them uh, when you're in that situation. But I'm sure she truly loves Maki and Mai. We come back with Maki holding Mai's body and Momo running towards them. It honestly feels bad. I mean, the Kyoto students had it rough uh, with Miwa first getting sad because of Mekamaru and, you know, Mekamaru dying. The Toto losing his arm and now Mai's death which affects Momo because you know Momo was really close with Mai and admired her a lot so it's uh, pretty sad as she holds her body and asks Maki what are you gonna do next as Maki walks away saying nothing and boom the chapter ends there and I'll go ahead and read the narration Starts off with, on that day, six high and 21 Kukuru squad members were reported missing and shortly found to have died of unnatural causes. And that unnatural cause is obviously Maki. No cursed energy residue was found at the scene. Trace amounts of cursed energy from a cursed tool could be detected from their wounds. Days later, the Gojo and Kamo clans proposed to Jujutsu headquarters the removal of Zenin clan from the three great families. The commissioner currently has the decision on hold. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty interesting. Uh, the Zenin clan looks like it's gonna be no more, which feels really weird to say. I mean, no more Zenin clan. That's it. We've already passed that mark. And I did not think that it would happen this soon, or at least this fast, but it also looked like this chapter was the end of that arc. You know, Maki for sure has developed getting that heavenly restriction, being on par with Toji's strength, and you know, hopefully we'll get to see more of her in action for the Cullen game. And I hope we also get to see, you know, the point of view for Yuji and Megumi. I really want to see them getting Hakuri to join the Cullen game and, you know, see how Yuta is doing in the Cullen game. Maybe we'll see that in the next chapter, who knows, and yeah, that next chapter is not gonna come anytime soon. It's gonna come out in a month or so because obviously with the break of Akutami Sensei and I'll post a picture on the screen of the break announcement from the I think Shonen Jump editorial department and I don't I don't think a lot of people realize how hard and rough it is to be a mangaka and you know do the work and publish the chapters and working it weekly um so yeah I mean I hope Gege the best both his or hers physical and mental health you know being well and on that note you know kind of speaking on my channel I do have some Jujutsu Kaisen videos planned to be made during this one month break I also plan to upload you know some more Chainsaw Man videos because with the anime trailer coming out pretty soon uh, I thought it's a I mean, well, perfect timing and I'm really excited for it uh, for the trailer I can't wait to see that but um, yeah that's honestly kind of all I have to say and uh, I hope you guys have a great weekend and a blessed day and hopefully you know you guys enjoyed this video but uh, yeah as always I appreciate you guys so much for watching this video it's been the fake weeb and I'm out peace